Here's a six by six inch document that we're going to print from Adobe InDesign. For the purposes of this tutorial, I've set up this document with a zero margin. We can see now how this image actually extends just a little bit outside of that margin. This is referred to as a bleed. I'll adjust the image frame so we can look at this in a different way. Basically, the image is just a little bit larger than the actual document size. When you're ready to trim the printed document, you'll actually cut through a little bit of this information, revealing a nice, clean, perfect edge. Let's swap the vector artwork from white to black. Notice how that information bleeds as well. Remember, a bleed is a design decision, only necessary if your visual information runs all the way to the edge of a document. I'll put the artwork back to my desired white, and let's print by going to File, Print. In the Print dialog window, let's make sure that the desired printer is selected. In this case, the Xerox Phaser 7500. I only want to print a single copy, so that will be one. Pages, this is a two-page document. I'm only going to print page two. So I'll set the range to page two. Let's move to Setup, where we can set our paper size. Notice we can choose from a number of standard size papers. The maximum size for this Xerox is the oversized tabloid 12 by 18. That's really good to know. If we're printing to a non-standard size paper, we can choose Custom and enter those dimensions here. Notice by default, we see the 6 by 6 dimensions of this document. We'll go ahead and choose U.S. letter size. We also have some other options, including the ability to scale the print smaller or larger, or change the position of where the information prints on the piece of paper. I'll choose Centered. Next, we'll move to Marks and Bleeds. Remember, we allowed our artwork to bleed outside the document's 6x6 six six dimensions. We need to add crop marks, which will print on the document and show us exactly where to trim it down to final size. Now let's uncheck Use Document Bleed Settings. We can now specify the amount of bleed that we want to print. Click the little chain link to automatically set all four bleeds to the same amount. And notice the new information on our thumbnail. We can see the little crop marks and a little pink line indicating the bleed. Generally, we won't need to change any of the other options in the print window. Before printing, it's always a good idea to review the changes that you've made. So far, we've been specifying how InDesign should handle the print. There's a good chance our selected printer has additional settings and adjustments available. Go ahead and click the Printer button. It's okay if you see this warning dialog box. This is just InDesign's way of warning you that you can actually change settings in multiple locations. Just be aware of that. This next window is specific to our selected printer. Let's make sure that that Xerox Phaser 7500 is selected at the very top. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the Xerox features. The feature that I'm most interested in is paper. It's really important that we actually tell the Xerox printer what kind of paper it's about to print on. Notice we have a lot of options. Heavy, we have cardstock, extra thick cardstock, which basically is 100 pound cover weight paper. You should absolutely know what the printer is capable of, as well as what kind of paper you're printing on. Notice down here we also have glossy papers. That is not inkjet glossy paper. If you're not sure if your paper is laser compatible, do not use it. We have many other adjustment options that are beyond the scope of this tutorial. If you're printing a 
book or double-sided full duplex printing or any other unusual options, you should really read the manuals and investigate all of these options thoroughly. Really understanding your equipment can be the difference between shoddy production or something that's fantastic. Let's go back to the Xerox Features menu. Let's choose Paper Feed. If you're using the large manual paper tray on the outside of the printer, we'll go ahead and select Manual Feed Tray 1, MPT. That stands for Manual Paper Tray. Click Print and you'll return to InDesign's print dialog window. Finally, you should be ready to click the print button and send the job to the printer. Here's our printed piece on a yellow gold paper stock. Notice the crop marks and the bleeds. Use these crop marks to trim your document to its final size. 